Forget frequently asked questions. Common sense, common knowledge, or Google. How about advice from a real genius? 95% of people in any profession are good enough to be qualified and licensed. 5% go above and beyond. They become very good at what they do, but only 0.1% a real Jesus. Richard Jacobs has made it his life's mission to find them for you. He hunts down and interviews geniuses in every field. Sleep science, cancer, stem cells, ketogenic diets, and more. Here come the geniuses. This is the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius Podcast. I have uh, Dakna Takover. She's a director of the Stop 5G and wireless harms project. Um, she's part of the Children's Health Defense, Children's Health Defense.org. Uh, she's an attorney in both New York and Israel. Uh, she has an MBA. She's a, a founder of what's called We Are the Evidence. It's an advocacy organization for the protection of rights of uh, people who have been injured by wireless technologies radiation. So we're going to talk about uh, 5G and uh, wireless radiation. So Daphna, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, Rich. Yeah, how did you first discover that that wireless radiation could could make some people uh, sick? Unfortunately, it was my own experience. Um, in 2009, I lived in Princeton, New Jersey. Um, I was about to start my own law practice, and um, and I went to buy a new laptop, and I was very happy because computers used to be my best friend. And I came back home with a new laptop and weird things started to happen. I was having tingling in my fingers, tingling in my feet. I would leave the computer, I'd be fine. Um, and um, those symptoms continued. I ended up um, changing five laptops in three weeks. And with every laptop, I was getting more and more uh, symptoms. I was getting headaches. I was getting heart palpitation when I was near the computer. It was difficult for me to think. I remember the third laptop, my ex-husband was talking to me and I literally could not understand what he was saying. There was like a cognitive block in my brain. So I was getting all of those symptoms um, and they were clearly happening when I was using the laptop. And that's why I kept on changing laptops. I thought something is wrong with all of those laptops. Um, and then suddenly I could also not use my cell phone. Whenever I was putting my cell phone near my head, I would feel as if someone is drilling inside in my brain. Uh, the way things happened, it was pretty clear what was causing the symptoms, um, and it was the Wi-Fi and the wireless, the Wi-Fi and the laptop and the wireless in general, like the cell phone. So um, lucky for me, it was very easy for me to know what is causing it, considering how it happened. But I know that there's so many people who are experiencing those, head those uh, symptoms like headaches, heart palpitation, cognitive problems, memory problems, like flu-like symptoms that don't go away, et cetera, et cetera. And they don't know what the cause for it. Um, and very likely for many of these people, the cause is the wireless in their homes and cell towers near their homes. All right. Do you think people develop this sensitivity over time or you either have it or you don't? Okay, so I don't like the word sensitivity. It's not sensitivity. It's literally an injury because the science show that these symptoms that I'm getting when I'm exposed to this radiation are uh, a result of very, very serious physiological in, uh, injuries in the body from this radiation. I used wireless for, for uh, over a decade when I got sick. I used to be, as you mentioned, you know, I used to work with wireless. Um, I was an early adopter of this technology and I had no symptoms whatsoever. So it's not something you were born with. You're not born intolerant to this condition, to, to this technology. You are developing it. Sometimes it can happen maybe because of some acute exposure and uh, for other it may happen because of this prolonged exposure and the levels of radiation for which we are uh, being exposed now are increasing exponentially from one year to another and it's not only the levels of radiation it also has to do with something called pulsation modulation which is how this technology works which is much more bioactive and we're exposed to numerous sources numerous frequencies and the the issue is um we are all electrosensitive. We all have, we are all electric being. You know, the human body is electric. Your, your heart is electric. Your brain is electric. Your nervous system is electric. Your nerves communicate electrically. So if you introduce electricity and this wireless technology is electricity um, in very high frequencies and in very high level of radiation, which are literally quintillion times higher than what you evolved to tolerate and quintillion is one and 18 zeros after it, then there'll be effects. And so we all are electrosensitive. The question when is our system is going to break and while for me you know and 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 
the evidence, and the evidence includes thousands of studies that show the harms clearly. Um, and if you have all of those, and, sorry, and, and what all of those thousands of studies are showing is that there are various effects on the body. So for me, it manifested as, you know, uh, neurological symptoms. But I did not get cancer. But there's also very, very, very strong evidence that it's causing cancer and different types of cancer. Um, our own government just published a study in 2018, a $25 million study that was done by the NTP, the National Toxicology Program, which are expert agency when it comes to toxin. And their study show that this radiation causes cancer and breaks the DNA in your body. So cigarettes cause cancer, this cause cancer and breaks your DNA, which can lead to a lot of other uh, conditions. What, what kinds of cancers associated? Be, uh, associated yeah. So that study found the type of cancer mainly that were found in this study that are called schwannoma type cancer. So these are cancers that are developed on the nerves that surrounding the organs, not on the organs themselves. And it's not surprising, again, because the nerves are an electric system and this radiation interacts with those electric systems. And so they found evidence of, uh, of uh, tumors in the heart and tumors in the brain. And for example, one type of a schwannoma cancer that is on the increase, um, it's called acoustic neuroma. And acoustic neuroma essentially is a tumor in, um, on the hearing nerve in the ear. Again, it's on the nerve. Um, this is not a tumor um, that is carcinogenic. But if you have a tumor in your brain, even if it's not carcinogenic, it's going to have a lot of impact on your brain. Um, and when you remove it, you're going to have additional uh, impacts on your brain as well as deformity of your face. So these are the type of cancer they're seeing. Um, other cancers that have been associated with this radiation um, is glioblastoma, which is cancer in the brain. So that is, and, and usually people estimate are of about six months life expectancy once you're diagnosed with this cancer. Uh, a lot of people we know died from this cancer, including Ted Kennedy, Joe McCain, Bo Biden, Joe Biden's son. There's the other brain tumors that are brain cancer that are caused from cell phones. Uh, we see a lot of tumors in places where people hold cell phones. So for example, the four top diseases that kill children right now are brain tumors, thyroid cancer, testis cancer, and rectal cancer. Everywhere people and children use and or keep their cell phones. Uh, we have women with breast cancer. And, and what's interesting in, in, their spread, in the tumor spread is that it's the way they use to hold their cell phone in the bra. So you actually can see the shape of the tumors, the way the, the phone was in their bra. And, and, and what's more interesting is these are women who had no genetic predisposition for cancer or for breast cancer. And many of them are pretty young. So it's, it's kind of like abnormality. It's crazy. It is. So, um, where are people exposed most? Is it in their home or is it when they're out and about that they get this exposure or is it from their cell phone primarily? So that's a really good question. And, and the answer is a little bit tricky. So essentially, um, a rule of thumb would be that radiation drops in a square of the distance. So the farther you are from the source, the better you are. So allegedly, your exposure to cell phone would be the worst exposure. But that is not true. That is something the you know, the wireless industry and regulators are trying to say, hey, there's nothing to worry about cell towers because your phone emits so much more radiation. So it's not really true. So they're different exposures and they have different types of effects. So when you hold a cell phone, it does emit from all of those devices around it emits the most radiation. But usually when you hold it, you hold it and it will be near one or, you know, a certain area in your body. And that will probably, the biggest rest from those will be to get some kind of tumor. And we do see people who get tumor where they used to hold their cell phone, as I mentioned before. And there's another very sad story of a guy from Florida. He was, a, he was an attorney and he got three tumors, one in his brain, one in his hands, and one uh, in his abdomen, or abdomen where he used to hold his cell phone. So everywhere he used to so hold his cell phone, that's where the tumors were. But there's also um, the problem of chronic exposures to Wi-Fi, to cell towers, which create different kind of effects. It's more, will create those neurological effects. You can turn off your phone, you cannot turn off your cell tower, the cell tower. And also, as I mentioned before, the issues of modulation. So this, the way, the, the way, you know, when we talk on the phone, um, essentially we transfer information, right? You, you transfer your voice over radio waves or microwaves. Um, but the actual talk, the actual words, the actual movie that you download, 
the way you put them on this carrier wave is by pulsing and modulating the signal. And that pulsation and modulation is causing the most bio effect. And some of these technologies have more bioactive modulations than others. So that's why it's very difficult to answer the question, what is it most harmful? And so the, the simple answer to that would be, you do not want to have all those wireless devices in your home because they emit a lot of radiation and this radiation is in very close proximity to you. So always the first step and is to, to start and reduce your exposure in your own home. Um, this is also the environment um, in which you have the most control. One thing that we've, we've started doing at night is um, we'll unplug the wireless router in the house and turn off our smart TV and all that. And, you know, at least so when we're sleeping, uh, there's a lot less ambient radiation. So do you think that that might be helpful or any suggestions for people at home? So this is critical, and I'm very glad you, you're doing it, um, and for a few reasons. First, you know, um, there's a lot of studies that show that this radiation decreased the melatonin production in your body. And melatonin is the hormone that your body releases when the sun goes down that helps your body recover from all of these different environmental assault that your, your body experienced during the day. This is a time where the body corrects all the damage. And if you have less melatonin because all of those devices emit radiation, uh, your ability of your body to heal from all of those assaults you're exposing to during the day is, is mitigated. So that is one uh, issue. So that is major. Furthermore, this radiation is interfering with your brain waves. And numerous studies showing EEGs that show the, how it interferes with various brain waves in your brain and so it interferes with your sleep so uh, critical to make sure that you turn off all wireless devices in your home um, however i do recommend people to also turn off all the wireless devices during the day i mean you don't really need your wi-fi router to work on wi-fi your router if you if you look at your router you will see that it also have ports in the back that you can connect with the wire so I work on the internet all day. I talk to you now on Zoom. I, I you know, connect with people all around the world. I text with people and I do it all uh, using wired internet connection. So the Wi-Fi router does not need to be there. And you can have someone in your house going and, and putting those ports all around the house. So wherever you are, you can have a port to connect to the internet and without getting this very harmful radiation. A question here, if you compare a Wi-Fi router versus cell network um, in a house, has anyone looked at which one is worse? I, I'm not sure well, what I'm not sure what your question is because it's different. Um, if using if it's better to connect with your phone through your Wi-Fi, is it better to connect through the cell tower? Well, like in in our house, you know, we could use Wi-Fi for everything, or we could use cell network for everything. So I mean, I don't know if anyone would make this choice, but if you were to choose between the two, is one more or less harmful than the other? Anyone studied that? There's no, again, there's no one more or less harmful. I think the answer will depend on a lot of factors, but I can, um, I can say that if you do not, it will depend on a lot of factors. So for example, if you have a very far cell tower and you don't have uh, a lot of reception in your home, your phone will uh, emit more radiation trying to connect to the cell tower. So if you're constantly with your phone on you, then uh, your phone may emit more radiation than if you had a closer cell tower. So, so many people, for that reason, use Wi-Fi router to connect. But the problem is the Wi-Fi router is, in a way, a cell tower in your house, which emits a lot of radiation and has very complex modulation. And so you have now a very close proximity source of radiation. So, um, and also, so you may... Uh, try and measure the radiation from your cell phone, it might show that you get you, your phone emit less radiation uh, when your Wi-Fi router is on, but then you get also the radiation of the Wi-Fi router. So um, I think that the, the right way to, to go about it is hardwire the internet in your house. So you can use all your devices wired to the internet, no, not using wireless. You can actually even hardwire your cell phone to the internet with a cable and an adapter. And uh, by the way, on the really? children's health, yes. And on the children's mm -hmm. health defense, and I can send you, I don't know if um, I can send in the link. On the children's health defense, there is a guide, a uh, step-by-step guide on how to hire, hardwire all your devices to the router. You can hardwire That's your cool. laptop, your cell phone, your iPad. You can hardwire everything to the internet. Um, and 
lot of, you know, I, I got sick before smartphones. So thank God I never got addicted to, to smartphones. And I'm, I'm happy I cannot use them because they cause me so much pain. So, um, but a lot of my friends who became sick from, from cell phones and Wi-Fi and all this wireless technology were already addicted to the smartphones. And it's very difficult for them. So um, what they do essentially, they, they really come home and they connect their cell phone, the smartphone to the router with a wire. And so they can do everything they, they do on a phone, just wire without their radiation. And so we do have a guide, a step to step, a step by step guide as to how to use, how to hardwire your ver- uh, the devices to the router. And I think so. Okay. If I if I answer your question, the, the answer would be you want to hardwire your devices to the router, turn off the Wi-Fi in the router, and if you have to keep your cell phone on, use it. Uh, as little as possible. I recommend people to get a home phone and to forward their call from their cell phone to the home phone, or you can just start making more calls on a home phone. I don't have a phone. I just use uh, Skype or over the internet uh, phones, and that's very helpful for me. Um, but get a phone and, and reduce your exposure to this radiation. What kind of uh, stories have you heard from people that have changed to hardwiring all their stuff? Like what, what have they said? Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I have thousands of studies. Uh, you know, we're doing this case now against the FCC, against the Federal Communication Commission, which is the agency that regulates this topic in our in our government, although it's not a health agency. And their guidelines are 25 years obsolete, and we're suing them now for that. And, you know, one of, and, you know, I have numerous affidavits of people who have been injured and what happened in their families after they uh, removed those wireless devices. So, um, you know, a lot of families have children nowadays with ADHD, and for for many of these children, it's not really ADHD. For many of these children, these are literally the effects of exposure to the Wi-Fi router and to the wireless devices. And I cannot tell you how many children, how many parents contacted me that after they removed the wireless devices, the, the, the children ADHD diagnosis was completely removed. We have children with autism um, that once the parents remove the wireless from the house, those children have incredible improvements. The most, the, the story I, I most often tell is um, I'm working with a doctor in California and she has a lot, she's a pediatric, uh, pediatrician. And uh, one day she had a family coming to her with uh, their 12 year old son who, you know, getting bigger and more aggressive. And, um, you know, they were thinking of institutionalize, institutionalizing him because they could not control him and they asked her if they have if she has any new medication to recommend and she said no uh, but if I may suggest turn off the wireless devices for two weeks and see what happens and she actually told them to turn them off only at night because she thought that the father will not you know get on board otherwise three days later she get a call from the mother she said my son first spoke now for the first time in his life he said full sentences within three days of turning off all these wireless devices. And again, this is not a story I heard third hand. This is a doctor I work with and she has a lot of patients and this is one of her patients. And she gave us an affidavit um, on this story and many, many other stories. And and, and I, I have numerous other families with children with autism that reported to me the same kind of incredible changes in their children's lives. Um, and yeah. a lot of times there's like spouses, one spouse is on board with, you know, removing wireless, the other one is not. But then once they remove the wireless, suddenly that tinnitus that the spouse that didn't want to remove had disappears. A lot of people have tinnitus and different auditory, you know, uh, effects that don't know what they are. For many of those people, it is the wireless. It's known as the microwave auditory effect. Uh, and it was proven by the U.S. Navy already in 1965. Why, why is there so much um, pushback on it? I mean, uh, I want to ask you about 5G in a second. But, you know, when I've brought this up to people um, and when I've interviewed people, it just seems like um, everyone that complains about wireless is called crazy and a quack and it's not real. And, you know, there's seems to be a lot of pushback on this. Well, I think there's a lot of reason for that. But first, I would say that the evidence is is conclusive. And actually, the evidence was conclusive before we ever commercialized this technology. And, um, you know, I'm an attorney and I work with other really good attorneys like, like Robert Kennedy. You know, he's behind the, the lawsuits against uh, Monsanto for the roundup. You know, attorneys don't submit lawsuits if there's no evidence. <laughs> They don't want to. So the evidence is conclusive. It has been conclusive. Um, I don't know if you heard about the mystery sickness of our diplomats in, in um, Cuba and uh, China. And our government admitted that that is microwave sickness. That is essentially, uh, they got those symptoms from microwave weapons of some sort, but they got them from type of 
yeah, and they got it. And there's an amazing paper written by uh, Professor uh, Beatrice Gollum from uh, University of South California. She's an MD, she has a PhD, and, and she basically proved that that was the cause of their symptoms. And there's a program by uh, 60 Minutes that was done, and there's the RF expert in that embassy, and he said the same thing. And as I said, the government admitted it. And essentially, the symptoms are exactly the same symptoms that I have. And those symptoms are not created by what's called thermal effect. They don't create because it's this radiation change some the temperature and tissue in my body it's caused from non-thermal levels just like your cell phone your wi-fi router etc etc so by playing with the modulation of this technology you can create different symptoms and different effects and governments from around the world know that for at least six decades if not more and the only the reason we ever started learning the effects of this technology was because our soldier in the soldiers in the u.s navy and the u.s air force started to become sick when they started to use radars radars just like your cell phone use micro frequencies in non-thermal levels and they had exactly the same symptoms that i have and in 1971 the u.s navy published a report with 2311 studies showing effect and in two in 1976 they they updated that report and it has it has 3,700 studies. And as I said, our government just published a study showing that this radiation is causing cancer and breaks your DNA. Um, uh, there are numerous studies from the EPA showing that it's causing, the modulation is causing effect, that it's causing uh, what's called effects on the uh, on the entry of calcium into the cells that leads to oxidative stress, which can lead to cancer, non-cancer condition, and other conditions. Um, there, there, Our government knows about this for decades. Our government studies uh, show it. NASA report, Air Force report, they all confirmed that. So no, there's no consp- we are not conspiracy theorists. If anything, the conspiracy is a conspiracy of our government on its own people. If you like this podcast, please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on iTunes. So why can't um, devices be modified to make them more safe? Is it that hard to do or what's the what's going on? Perfect question. Right now, there's absolutely no incentive. And that, and that is exactly my pitch. There are ways to make this technology safer. They need to test the frequencies to see which frequencies are least bioactive. They need to test the modulation to find modulation that are less bioactive. And they don't do that. And the reason is they don't do it. Uh, I don't know why they don't do it, but I assume it's they don't have the incentive to do it. Uh, people aren't aware, but the wireless industry is not insured. Um, they don't have insurance for health effects for lawsuits. Um, if people would look at their uh, uh, employment policy or their uh, children's uh, policies in school, they will see that there is no insurance from health effects from wireless technology. Question is why? Because the insurance companies know the truth. And, and because of that, the wireless industry has to make sure that the public would not know how harmful this is. And, um, and they made sure to pass legislation that will protect them. And right now in the United States, you cannot sue for damage that was caused to you as a result of cell towers and cell phones if you started to use this technology after 1996 because of legislation. So right now, the wireless industry has no incentive to make this technology safer. They have an incentive to continue the lie and tell people, uh, make sure that they control regulatory agencies that tell us what is safe and what's not safe. And um, they have the incentive to, to make sure that people who, who basically know the evidence, like myself, who try to make the public be aware of the evidence, will be called conspiracy theorists because we are a threat. Um, a month ago, there was an article that was published by the General Counsel of the FCC. It's called 5G Conspiracy Theories Are Threats to U.S. Recovery. Um, I published a, a response last week. Um, and you can see and read the evidence. The only conspiracy right now is a conspiracy of our own government, of the FCC. The FCC is completely controlled by the wireless industry. The current FCC chairman is a, a Verizon attorney. The previous chairman was the head of the Wireless Industry Lobby Association, just like the you know Tobacco Association lobby. They control the FCC and the FCC regulate this topic and they control the FCC. And that's why we have regulation, which is irrelevant and it's 25 years obsolete at least. Um, so uh, there's a big fraud that this is not different than a tobacco fraud. You know, people who say that, um, you know, tobacco is harmful were also conspiracy theorists and doctor told you how safe it is. It's not. And you saw the fraud and the fraud was exposed. But the wireless fraud, that is much bigger. That is the biggest fraud ever conducted on the public. What about... Um... 5G, what's going to be the difference when 5G is rolled out versus uh, our current networks? So there's a lot of misinformation as for what 5G is. 5G is an infrastructure. 
it's not necessarily specific technology. It's an infrastructure for the Internet of Things, for driverless cars, and anything and everything that will come moving forward. Um, what is the Internet of Things? The Internet of Things means that in the next few years, we're going to interconnect 20 billion more devices wirelessly. So you talked about your smart TV. Well, your smart TV... Uh, what it means, it has a microwave radiation transmitting antenna. That what makes it smart. That's wireless. So essentially, the idea is that every device in our house will have a wireless transmitting antenna. Your TV, your refrigerator, your laundry machine, your tea kettle. They even have diapers now that have a microwave transmitted antenna to text the mother whenever the baby poops. So if you have so many more devices connected wirelessly, you need more cell towers. And that is really what 5G is about, bringing cell towers closer to our home to support this massive wireless infrastructure. And for that, they're coming out with what's called small cells. They're putting small cell antennas near our homes. In the, in the next two years, uh, about 800,000 small cell towers uh uh, will be deployed or actually already are being deployed. And those towers are being in- installed on electric poles uh, on our street, near our homes, sometimes a few feet away from people's homes and children's bedrooms. And um, so this is really what 5G is. It's an infrastructure that requires a lot more antennas. And that means more radiation closer to people anywhere and ever. So it's more antennas, more devices in your house transmitting. This is what 5G is. And you ask yourself, why do we need it? I don't know. I don't think that a mother need um, uh, to get a text on her uh, phone when her baby poops. The idea is data. This is in order to collect data. And that data is not going to be used for necessarily for uh, uh, marketing. It's especially for artificial intelligence. And that means surveillance. It means that they know everything and anything you do, any minute you do it, where you do it, where you've been, what you do, what you use, how you use. And that is all going to be used for artificial intelligence. And um, and the uh, estimation is that within the next 20 years, 40% of the workforce will be fired for, uh, and will be replaced by artificial intelligence. And the next level of all of this really is what's called transhumans. And this is not some science fiction. You can go and check Google what it does and the tell you that that's what we're doing transhumanism so they want to encourage incorporate machine and humans so uh, for example Elon Musk came out with a company that it's called uh, Neuralink he wants to implant a device in your brain that will communicate with your cell phone and this is really all of this is heading and so all of this information they collect from all of those everything is interconnected is used for those purposes and so this is a bad idea all around. And, you know, this is going to change who we are, what we are, uh, will increase surveillance. Um, uh, for example, Bill Gates is, is uh, invested now a billion dollar in a company that um, is going to launch 500 satellites that will see everything and anything that has happened any spot on Earth all the time. And all of this data will be available in seconds delay and will go to our government. Um, and, and not well, only to our government, to private companies. Um, has 5G been rolled out in any um, city or location? And are we getting data on the effects yet? Or is yep. it, uh, just yeah, five days all over. No, I mean, it's, as I said, 5G, most of the 5G infrastructure at this point is 4G antennas. They're just... Antennas that are being installed instead of those big towers, you know, farther away, they're literally on electric pole. People should go outside the house. And I'm sure that many of them are going to discover that they have a cell tower on the electric pole near the house. They just didn't notice it. And if they got weird symptoms recently, that is the cause for it. And yes, we are seeing symptoms. I'm in touch with so many families that had the, um, that had those antennas installed on, you know, electric pole near, near their house and the whole family is sick. And they're not getting sick within years or months. They're getting sick literally within day of installation of those antennas. They start getting headaches, heart palpitation, children with flu-like symptoms that don't go away, vomiting, uh, heart palpitation, sleep disturbances, the normal neurological symptoms that you get from this radiation, which are not normal, which indicate very severe injuries in your body. So, yeah, so what's the current like- state of things? I mean, it, it sounds like in order to fight this, one lawyer can't do it. One person can't do it. It would need to be like a, a big consortium across many industries uh, with many, many people supporting it. What, what's, what do you think is going to be the way that, the, that you're going to be able to challenge this or, or force adoption, um, you know, where the, the, um, the frequencies used and the, the protocols used are at least tested to see what's less harmful? So um, this is a great question and it's a great point. Yes, no one law is going to to win this, especially considering how limited we are legally uh, um, after all the lobbying effort of the wireless industry. So 
our ability to do is, as I said, very, very limited. I think the most important thing right now is education, to get more and more people on board and understanding that there are major effects and they need to fight back. They need to fight back by educating others, educating our municipalities and start to pressure. And communities where this is happening, you see that slowly more and more municipalities are getting on board and trying to fight back and try to adopt ordinances that limit uh, the deployment of 5G within their towns. Again, because of the FCC regulation, that is not an easy thing to do, but it is possible to do at least to limit it and keep it away from some areas. So people need to fight this in, in every level. They need to fight it on a, on a personal level by educating others because our biggest force is the grassroots movement. And the fact that you and I are even having in this discussion now um, is because we've been creating, working really, really hard to create grassroots movement. And so this is becoming more and more known. Um, so we need to educate each other and then we need to educate our local uh, municipalities and local legislators. And then we also need to work on the national level. Uh, it's not an easy, easy fight. It's, a, it's an uphill battle. And that's why People need to first protect themselves by stop using this technology in their homes. There are alternatives. You don't have to use it. You just have to make a decision. It's a decision. Um, and then you need to put an effort in educating other and put pressure, local government, your federal representatives, um, and hopefully uh, more and more attorneys will submit lawsuits and um, and and eventually we'll have we have to fight this this is just not sustainable people are sick and they need to know why they're sick and unless the grassroots will take action nothing will change what are, what are some of the counter arguments that you run into well um what i would say i mean they say oh we don't see uh sickness uh we don't see increase in sickness yes you do there's increase in adhd increase in autism increase in death from neurological problem increase in death from certain brain tumors uh, uh increase in in various uh tumors not just brain tumors uh reproductive harms uh for that is, we didn't mention before, but the, the data on reproductive harm is beyond conclusive. There's about 100 studies showing clearly what it does to the sperm. Uh, we know that male sperm in the past 30 years is down 30% in quality and, and the effects are, 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 are huge. So, yeah, get that cell phone off your pocket and do not put your Wi-Fi laptop on your lap ever, especially not your children. Um, so um, the evidence is pretty clear. We see this huge increase in numerous conditions and all of them have very strong evidence connecting that, those effects to wireless technology radiation. So that is not true. So the evidence is there, the scientific evidence and the human evidence. The other, uh, you know, you know, the other um, uh, slogan that is being used is this is no evidence. So here's the answer. There are thousands of studies showing the harms of this technology beyond any doubt. Actually, the majority of studies do show harm, not that the majority is important, positive studies always important more important than negative studies but even if you look at the majority of studies the majority of studies do show effects so the thousands of study i encourage people to go and look at the bio initiative report it's a report that was written by the 29 leading scientists from around the world on this issue and it's covering 3800 studies on the effects of this technology and the conclusions are clear. Effects are, are uh, can occur within minutes of exposure. Are there any um, engineers or companies that are trying to develop uh, devices that have all the same functionality but are safer to use? Is there anyone taking that direction? I, I hope that that is happening. I don't know yet about any such technology that came out. Um, one, I mean, last week we had a debate with telecom, and one of the reasons I was very happy about this opportunity was to try and, and encourage smart people in a telecom industry to venture out and start working on safer technologies. Um, I don't know right now about a device that is safer, but I do hope that there are smart people out there working on. What I do see, and I do want to say something about it, I do see a lot of, you know, because so many people are getting sick, more and more people are getting aware there's all kind of companies that come out with all kinds of solution that's supposed to protect you and i'm i'm really encouraging people to be wary about that we have to understand that electricity or anything that has to be has frequencies and modulation is bioactive and they're coming out with all of these devices that's supposed to help your body but they don't really know um, anything that has a biological effect any any of these devices that may affect you may also adversely affect you and you would not even know. Um, so I'm 
definitely recommending people do not use all of these devices. Do not believe all of those kind of like promises that it's your radiation and do not believe their videos that show less radiation. There's so many ways in which you can manipulate to show that something has less radiation with the device or without the device. So I, I really encourage people do not fall for that. Don't start to spend thousands of dollars on all kinds of devices that actually can harm you. The real solution for people is to disable this technology. Do not use this technology. And that is really the only thing that can protect you uh, reliably. Well, if you, if, if for people that are just addicted and unwilling to do that, is anyone doing a study? Let's say they look at all the different popular cell phones out there and they sort them by most to least radiation or the different headphones, you know, AirPods versus Sony AirPods versus wired. I mean, if, if it's, it's not, it's not important. To get people, well, it's it, not, well, if, if you can't get people to just stop, maybe you could at least point them and you, maybe you can do like a, a consumer reports type thing where you can reduce it even 10%. Maybe that would help something. You know? uh, 10% Double. would not help. We are exposed to so much radiation right now. It's really that you need to make, as I said, that if people look for a simple solution, you know, that people sell people those sticker to put on your phone. Guys, if your phone connect with a cell tower two miles away, then it emits a lot of radiation. So those stickers cannot protect you. So um, there are no simple solutions. I mean, it's really, uh, um, there are no simple solution. Uh, if you, yeah, you should not use your AirPods. You should not put Bluetooth emitting radiation uh, in your ear that the radiation goes directly to your brain nonstop. Uh, instead, you, yeah, you can have headphones. You just have to have a hardwired headphones. And if your cell phone doesn't have a, a port for it, you can either get an adapter or buy a phone that has it. If people would demand it, then the companies will manufacture it. But get hardwired headphones. Um, you know, one thing that I tell people absolutely do not dare use is those eye watches and the Fitbits. That is like one of the dumbest ideas I've ever seen. You know, people buy them in order to, you know, become more fit and more healthy um, and they measure the heart you know how it measures your heart by pulsing emfs 300 and 400 times a second to measure your heart by that time they also me mess your heart 50 percent of people i talk to have heart palpitation from those uh, eye watches many of them have oh, the heart wow. palpitations and they kind of like nobody told them that it might be that the eye watch is causing it to them uh, until i kind of like talk to them and they said oh yeah actually they did start at the same time guy okay, those eye watches are the dumbest idea ever just take them off or at least put them on airplane mode fitbit had two recalls because people were getting sick uh, a skin problem with them and the skin problems are not from the chemical the skin problem they take from the radiation numerous studies showing that this radiation causes exactly those skin problems that people have been experiencing from those fitbits so really uh just you don't need i i watch you don't need fitbit uh you can go and get a mechanical device that measures the amount of steps you did per day and you definitely don't want to mess up your heart by measuring your heart all the time every second which is what your eye watch does and messes up your heart so uh no i don't have solutions to tell you, oh, this is a little bit better. Um, you know, there's really no difference between all the smartphones and they all emit insane amount of radiation. There are numerous microwave transmitting antennas on your phone. The solution is to start and use less, your phone less. Disable the antennas you don't need. Disable the Bluetooth in your phone. Disable the data in your phone when you don't use it. Uh, keep conversations short. Uh, forward your calls to your home phone when you're home. You have to take measurement. And if you're addicted and you, you don't want to date, my ex-husband is an MD, has a PhD in molecular biology, and he tried to warn me six months before he got before I got sick. He told me, uh, you know, he saw me on the phone all the time, and it was not a smartphone; it was BlackBerry at the time. He said, "He said, Daphne, maybe you want to take breaks between calls." And I just smiled and I said nothing. And I remember the thought in my head, oh, everything causes cancer. Worst case scenario, I get a brain tumor when I'm 70 and 80. Well, I was 36 and I didn't get cancer. I got a condition that made my life impossible. I cannot go and be anywhere because of wireless. Um, I cannot walk on the street with those 5G antennas. I, you know, I only go to do my work and come out. And even then it's a nightmare for me. And it means that there's serious injuries in my body from this radiation. So, you know, if you, if you want to continue and use it because you're addicted, that's fine have no doubt there'll be severe uh, health effect to you and your family. And if I may say one more thing, um, my, my advice, you know, this is invisible. You know, when people smoked, you know, you can smell it, you can see the smoke. This is the perfect toxin. You don't see it, you don't smell it. 
some people can hear it. You know, they get those auditory effects and tinnitus, um, but most people cannot hear it. Some people can feel it like me, but not everyone. Um, and so it's a perfect toxin and it's doing all of this great good for us, right? Allegedly. I think that one of the things I found most effective is for people is to get a meter, a radio frequency meter that measure the radiation and makes it real. So it has light, it has numbers. Some of them you can actually hear the radiation. They like convert the signal into sound so you can actually hear it, how it sounds and what your body gets. And that makes it real. So you can start go around your house and you can see the various devices. You're going to def- discover that so many devices in your house have transmitting antenna and you didn't even know about it. And so if you have a meter, it makes, it makes it real and you start to understand what is really going on in your environment when it comes to this radiation. And that is a really good first step to start, to start um, a process of change. So I do recommend getting those meters. Yeah, one, one quick story is we had a, a lady come and do like a, a survey of our house. And for some reason in the bedroom, there was one wall that was really, really active. and We didn't know why. We couldn't figure it out. And um for a little while, my wife had the bed there, and she wasn't sleeping well at all. And then after the lady came, I said, you know, let's move it to the other wall. And once we did, she was sleeping a lot better. And we just, we still don't know what's going on with that wall. It's really weird, but uh, we don't put anything near it now, you know. It's very strange. It's, uh, what happens is a lot of times, is, this is probably from low uh, uh, flow frequencies from the electric, from the electric wiring in your house. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, what is allowed in the United States is not allowed in the rest of the world. The levels of uh, magnetic fields and electric fields that are allowed are about 2,000 times lower in Europe and in Israel. In the U.S., they're completely irrelevant. And many times people don't wire the house properly and they're causing this kind of like hard, hard wiring problems that are causing health effects to people. So it's not only the wires that may be the problem. A lot of people start uh, experiencing symptoms from what's called smart meters. I'm sure that, you know, the expert that checked your house checked for smart meters, but those are utility yeah. meters that are being installed on people's homes um, and they're wireless. And I know more people who got sick from those smart meters than from anything else. And a lot of reasons for it. So that is another tip for people. Um, you may want to go and check if you have a wireless transmitting uh, uh, utility meter. And it's very easy uh, to, to see if it has like those digital number on it. It means that it's wireless. And you want to change that. In most states, uh, we were able to get opt out. I mean, activists were fighting and there is an opt out. So you can pay a fee and get, a, and get that that meter remove and that is critical and so yeah people don't know why they don't sleep uh, very likely it's your wireless devices your smart meter your wi-fi router your phone near your head um just start turn them off and just like your wife you're going to see uh immediate changes well, very good Daphne. what what's the best way for people to learn more about uh, what you're talking about if they have a problem where can they go uh, so there's um, um, there are a few websites that I recommend. First, they can go to the Children's Health Defense. Uh, we have a lot of material on our website and a lot of educational articles that explain the issues. Um, another good website is, uh, it's called Safer, E-M-R. Dot com. EMR stands for electromagnetic radiation. Um, and it's a website from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Joel Moscovich from Berkeley University. And he has a lot of information, thousands of studies on his website and summaries for those studies. So people can see that it's not a conspiracy theory. Um, there are another good website is Physicians for Safe Technology. This is a group of, of medical doctors who join together to start educate the public and medical doctors and also have a lot of very good resources on their website. In terms of finding professional to help you and mitigate the radiation in your home, there's uh, something called Building Biologists, and there's a website for building. They're called Building Biologists, and there's a website, and you can put your zip code, and you can see people in your area. Um, There are a lot of groups on Facebook, so you can also get people recommendations for for people to come and help you mitigate the radiation in your home. So I think those are the the main uh, resources I would recommend at this point. Um, And the bioinitiative report, which I just mentioned, uh, which I mentioned earlier, um, that is, you know, the most extensive review of science on this topic. It was done by the best scientists in the world on this issue. And um, they reviewed 3,800 studies and you can see the reviews, you can see the conclusion, you can see their bios. And um, that is a good, you know, resource to send people, your friends, anyone who tells you that you're a conspiracy theorist. Okay. Well, very good. Well, Daphna, thank you for coming and I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much uh, for helping us spread the word. Thank you. If you like this podcast, please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on iTunes. 
You've been listening to the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. If you like what you hear, be sure to review and subscribe to the Finding Genius Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And want to be smarter than everybody else? Become a premium member at FindingGeniusPodcast.com. This podcast is for information only. No advice of any kind is being given. Any action you take or don't take as a result of listening is your sole responsibility. Consult professionals when advice is needed.